Hey, this is Brock Lemires. We're continuing our study of embedded systems design. In this chapter, we are going to change our language from assembly to C. <clears throat> and wh what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically go through everything that we've done up until this point in assembly, but show you how to do it in C. And so just to set up the set the stage for this, I'm it, we're going to a lot of these are really basic <clears throat> basic function functions when you get to C, but I want to create a short video for every single one of them. So there's going to be a, a video for a while loop, video for a for loop, video for if else, the case, uh, bitwise <clears throat> operations. And <clears throat> it's more than, than just typing the C out and hit and run. What I want to do is I want to look at how the C is actually compiled or first compiled into assembly, and then how it actually gets put into program memory. Because what we're doing when we change to the C language is we're moving into what we call a higher level of abstraction. <clears throat> and what we'll notice is that assembly is not abstract, okay? You are, you are moving information into specific registers and the specific address locations in memory. <clears throat> and each instruction corresponds to an actual task or instruction that the CPU can do. When you move into C, you give up all that uh, control. So you no longer are in charge of where a variable is put. You know, is the variable gonna be in, on the stack? Is it in the CPU register? You let the compiler figure that out based upon the best usage of the architecture of the CPU. <clears throat> and at the same time, that's great because it allows us to develop programs that are more algorithmic. But at this, but we also are trying to understand computers. And so this is kind of our chance to take a look at what actually happens when you write a C program and how it gets compiled into actual uh, actual instructions, okay? So this video, we're, let's, just, let's just jump right into CCS and take a look, okay? So I'm gonna go into CCS and I'm gonna do a file new CCS project, but now what we're gonna do is we are using C. So we're no longer gonna get a main.asm, we're gonna get a main.c. And so kind of following the naming conventions that we have, I'm gonna use uh, C <clears throat> as, the, <laughs> as the start to my uh, project. And I'll just call this constructs and skeleton. And this is, we're not gonna do anything. We're just gonna take a look at what we get when we get this main.c from CCS. So go ahead and hit finish. And now you have a new skeleton, but it's in the language C. So let's take a look at just some of the things right away, just some of the basics, okay? And, and this should, probably a remi uh, refresher because you've probably programmed a C before, but there's gonna be new things in here because if you've never programmed an MCU directly with C, there's some differences. <clears throat> so first and foremost, it's a main.c, but notice that the first line in here is the uh, header file. So you will use pound include uh, MSP430H and this is the same functionality as that .cdecls uh, directive that was in assembly. And so in C, we just do a pound include and it'll include those header files. This is really cool because it allows us to use all the, the name definitions for the registers and the bit masks, just like we did in assembly. So we don't actually lose anything in terms of understanding the naming conventions. Uh, so we can use that directly in C. <clears throat> okay. Then we come down here and let's take a look at the comments. So there's two types of comments in C, just to remind you, there's block comments and then there's line comments. Block comments start with uh, forward slash asterisk and they end with asterisk forward slash and anything between them is a comment. And so you can span multiple lines and then a line head, a line comment is basically forward slash forward slash and it'll comment, comment everything out until the end of the line. So this is how you'd put a, com uh, a comment after like an individual statement. And then this is how you do like a, a block. <laughs> All right, <clears throat> then uh, let's take a look at this. We have a statement. Look, notice that we are using assignment statements in C just like you would think, right? I mean, A equals B plus C type, of, type assignments. Now we're not using move instructions anymore. This was implemented with a move instruction in assembly, but now this statement right here is actually doing the stop the watchdog timer functionality for us. And so that's what a statement starts looking like in C. And this one is pretty direct. You'll see that it synthesizes or, I mean, it compiles directly into a, uh, into a mnemonic. <clears throat> okay, then in C, the way that C works is you have this notion of this main function. 
Okay, so you always start off with int main and then void. And what this does, what this means is that you're essentially writing your main program almost like it's a function call. And the the void here uh, is the parameters you pass into it. So when you say main void, you're you're calling your main routine <clears throat> main, and you're not going to pass any variables into it. Okay. And then when you come down here, you have this return zero. Well, what happens is that when you call the routine or call this function, it's going to say, well, what are you going to return if you ever end? <clears throat> and down here, what you do is you say, well, if this ever ends, go ahead and give the calling function or the calling routine a zero. And so you can think about writing C main programs as somebody's going to call this <clears throat> and then it executes. Now, here's what's funny is this notion of returning in a main in a C program, a main C, main loop, you don't really return in an MCU program. Okay, uh, this notion of this return zero is kind of meant for you know higher level computing software where you're calling programs. So like an operating system calls this program. We're writing code for a microcontroller, so we really don't want our microcontroller to ever end. We want to turn the thing on and have it run continuously forever. The only thing we might do to cause it to maybe save cycles is to put it in low power mode. So we, we really don't ever want to hit this return zero in a uh, <clears throat> in a MCU program. Uh, in fact, a lot of times we don't even put that in there, okay? All right, here is what is also important. Look at what's not in here. So notice that the reset vector is not in here. Well, it turns out that when you do this int main void, <clears throat> Uh, this right here, due to the header files and the linker files in C, this automatically handles initializing the reset vector. So it's going to take the first instruction in your program, the address of it, which we know is at 8,000, <clears> and it's going to put that into uh, the, the vector table at FFFE, and it will automatically handle that. So we didn't need to put the directive uh, for the reset vector like we did in assembly. Also notice that the stack pointer isn't initialized. Okay, so we didn't have to put the stack pointer initialization in here. It's actually handled behind the scenes in some of the automatically generated files that were created by CCS when you you created this project. And then also notice that we didn't use we didn't need to tell the compiler where in memory to put these things. The dot text directive that tells the assembler where to put the next set of statements into program memory, we didn't do that. <clears throat> so we allow the compiler to determine which statements are actually program operations or program instructions and which ones are going to be setting up things like variables. So we don't have the dot text directive in here. We don't have the dot data directive in here, and we don't have any directives to allocate memory. Okay, so now let's take a look at some of the, the function or the capabilities that you have in CCS. I'm actually going to run this. So I'm going to We'll be careful when we run it because <laughs> it doesn't do anything. But let's go ahead and just see what happens when we run this. So I got my MSP430 plugged in, and I have just compiled this, and I've created uh, an executable and downloaded it. And we're going to use a tool that's very interesting. It's called disassembly. So if you don't see this tile right here, this window, go up here and go view uh, disassembly. So it's down here. And what this shows you is it shows you the assembly code that was created from your C code. So you can actually go into this and try to check out like what is going on here? Is this, are the mnemonics that were created what I thought? And so when you look at this, you're going to start recognizing some things, but you're also going to recognize a lot of stuff that you've never seen before. And that's, I guess, would be called not recognizing <laughs> stuff in here. So for example, let's go look at 8,000 and see what it put at the first instruction. Well, lo and behold, there is a whole bunch of setup stuff that is inserted in here <clears throat> that I don't even know what half of it is. So you have this UINT16 check start protection address. Let me look at that. I don't even know what that stuff is. There's a whole bunch of initialization of the CPU that is happening in here. First of all, there's like stack pointer in here. So it doesn't look like that's, I don't know what that's doing, but it's using the stack pointer already. It may have initialized the stack pointer on download. Um, it also just has all this setup. So look at this, it's got FRAM in there. It's got protection, check protection. It's got all these system flags. 
And it isn't even until you get down to 803C that you finally see where our main uh, function label is. And so take a look at what happens here. <laughs> what did it put for the mnemonics and the, the opcodes and operands down here? Well, this instruction right here was actually the instructions for this guy right here. So stop on the watchdog counter. And notice that it still used, it did a move. So this statement right here was compiled into a move op, a move instruction. And it used immediate mode addressing and, and some, some label or some bit mask that's 5A80. And it put that into a register name that was WTD underscore A underscore WTD CTL. So that's just the watchdog control register. This is interesting because it does show that our C code is put is, you know, it's basically translated into assembly and we can see it in memory. But it also shows that it is doing some weird stuff that we may not even recognize. Most of the time we can recognize it uh, roughly, but this is kind of the power of a high level language is you let go of the control of how these statements are going to be, you know, translated into instructions. You're just going to say, you know what, that compiler knows better than I do. And so I'm just going to trust it. Okay. All right. So then here's, here's what a return zero does. <clears throat> Clear R12. <laughs> so it actually just implemented. It's kind of like some bogus thingamajig. And then that was it. And then it did an RETA. I've never even seen that mnemonic. I've never even seen that before. And so look at this. And then after that, it puts some, uh, some abort code in here. So it does a no op <clears throat> and then it basically does a, uh, a loop forever. So it basically gets in a forever loop. So that's kind of interesting. One of the features that we will be using a lot is, is not a feature, but a setting is the optimization level. So if you come up to project, <clears throat> let's see. So if I go, I'm going to go ahead and stop this. Actually, one more thing I'll show you before we, we leave. We can set breakpoints in here. So I'm going to set a breakpoint at my first statement and I'm going to run to it. So I go ahead and run down to here and did it set the breakpoint? Let's see. So I'm going to go ahead and pause and I want to make sure that I set that. Oh, I jumped all the way out of it. So let me, let me recompile that breakpoint must not have stuck. So I'm going to go ahead and stop. I'm going to go ahead and debug again. <clears throat> and then I want to set a breakpoint. What I'm trying to show you is that breakpoints still exist. So you do put breakpoints in a, a C program. But when you step it, it's a little bit interesting. So let's go ahead and start stepping and see what happens. So look at, I'm, I'm down here after this, I did get to the breakpoint and I'm gonna sit there and step and you notice what's happening here. Let's go ahead and step again. Now it's down here to whatever that thing is. And then you step again and now it's gonna do something really weird. And holy cow, we are in like abort mode. <laughs> okay. Now what, what was important about that? One thing is that breakpoints still work. So you can breakpoint and you can walk and you can step on these instructions. But sometimes when you hit step, it'll look like it's not moving off this statement. And that's because you may have had the compiler translate a statement into two or three different instructions that you have to step over. So you'll be clicking the step button and then all of a sudden it'll it won't move for a while and then all of a sudden it moves. That's because it's actually stepping it instruction by instruction. The other thing was that when we hit this return zero, the computer went bonkers, okay, because it it's not like an operating system calling it. When I did return zero, it like crashed. So it did an exit.c call. I don't know where that came from. Spins forever. And it basically got, it just, it essentially hangs the MCU. So you can't get out of anything. That's why we don't want to ever hit that return zero. That we were, we're building like a real time controller. We want this thing to constantly be running. Okay. Okay. Let's go look at this final thing, which is the uh, optimization levels. When I get out of debug mode and I go into here, you can go project properties. And this has a bunch of settings that you can use to kind of guide the compiler. One of the interesting one is optimizations. <clears throat> so when I come down here, you've got optimization level and you can come and you can say, I want to optimize for registers or I want to optimize for global optimizations or I want to do whole prog program optimizations. And, or you can turn everything off. And what we're going to see is that if, when you let the compiler optimize, it creates a really great condensed good program. But when we are trying to see how our, for example, a while loop gets translated into assembly, if I have optimization on, it might just remove the while loop. 
<clears throat> because it's saying, well, you're not accessing the outside world, so you wrote a, a stupid program. I'm just going to delete it. So we will, it, to be able to see the execution instruction by instruction of some of our constructs, we're actually going to be turning this off in some of the examples. But this is where you can do it. This is where you can do things where you can also do things where you might say, if I set up variables, put them in, in registers, okay? Or you might say, I'm gonna I'd rather have you put them in the stack, or I might have you put them in data memory, okay? So these are this is one of the key settings that we're gonna have. But over here, you're gonna see, these are where you can configure some of the compiler settings. If you leave them at their default, they're great too, because they're just gonna rip, they're gonna do whatever's best for the MCU. Uh, but they do remove a lot of your code if it doesn't access the outside world. So, okay, that's it. So uh, that is the switch over to C. And next we will start looking at how you actually code up some basic constructs. All right, that's it. Remember to support my channel by subscribing and see you.